Hello, and welcome to Rise of the Data Cloud. Today's episode features an interview with Zach Sippel, Senior Director of Data and Business Intelligence at Chipotle. Zach has previously held senior positions at Target and Slalom and is a self-proclaimed data lover. On this episode, Zach talks about the evolution of the restaurant industry throughout the pandemic, how to create accessible data, the secrets to successful leadership, and much more. So please enjoy this interview between Zach Sippel and your host, Steve Hamm. Well, Zach, it's great to have you on the podcast today. Welcome. Thanks, Steve. Great to be here. Hey, would you please start by describing Chipotle's business kind of in all of its dimensions and also a bit about the competitive landscape? Yeah, you, you bet, Steve. You know, most people know Chipotle, a fast casual restaurant, super tasty burritos and tacos, which is totally true. You know, we have 2,800 restaurants across the United States, Canada, and Europe, but there's a lot more Chipotle that I think makes it extremely special that not everybody knows about. And, you know, we, we serve only responsibly sourced real food with wholesome ingredients, no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, no artificial preservatives. And Steve, it is awesome to watch all of it come together when we use the classically uh, cooking techniques with all the stuff cooking fresh veggies squashing our avocados frying the chips grilling all the meats it is awesome and on, on top of that you know for us sustainability of our world is a real thing and we focus on our impact of it and our progress and our goals in our efforts to make sure we are cultivating a better world at all times and, and i love that about chipotle and lastly around around Chipotle, I would say, is digital technology innovation. It's not just a component of Chipotle. It is a core component of Chipotle. And it is a very big focus, very big focus, including the data and analytics. Uh, and, and lastly, the, um, your question about the competitive landscape. Competitive landscape for fast casual has evolved a lot uh, during COVID. You know, as people were sheltered in place, their options became limited. They started to really evolve new ways of ordering with restaurants, including digital access points, delivery marketplaces. And COVID caused you know, a lot of trial, a lot of experimentation uh, for people out there. And if you give people a really great and easy experience, like I think Chipotle does, they tend to come back. And, and we've seen that. And I think other people are seeing that too. You've talked a little bit about COVID and what's happened with the shift that's gone on here. I want you to drill down a little bit more. I know that the company has fared actually well during the, the COVID-19 crisis, huge surge in digital sales, opening more than 100 new restaurants last year. It seems like the company's leaders decided to continue a strong focus on digital in the crisis, and it really paid off. So give us some of the detail on on the decision they made and how they operationalized it and how they executed it. Chipotle is looked at as a digital leader uh, in our space. And we had, we had strong performance last year due to our digital focus, of course, but also a ton of investment in our employees as well. And in Q1, our digital sales grew 133 plus percent, accounted for half of our sales. Pretty awesome. And Chipotle has been and continues to invest in technology, making sure we have our place in the future of this food service world. Uh, and that include things like Chipotle lanes, which I'll tell you what, what that's about in a sec, alternative store formats, re our rewards program, which is doing really great, digital only menu items. And we spend a, a ton of time making sure the app and the website is the very best digital customer experience it can be. And like Chipotle lanes, it, it's what we consider the digital drive through the future, where you have drive through service for customers who place orders directly through our app. Uh, it's a big focus for us. We opened 40 new restaurants in Q1, 26 of those had Chipotle lanes. And um, from an alternative store formats, we opened our first ever digital only restaurant in New York last year. So exciting to see how that's going. And our rewards program big focus for us, amazing success there and engagement with our customers. We now have over 21 million members in our program, and it is a key enabler for us to continue our digital flywheel and optimize 
the important customer data set we have for how we engage with our customers out there. Now the chip hot lanes, is that something that emerged just out of COVID or did you already had it on the drawing boards and it just was very timely? Yeah, we've had them there prior to COVID, mm -hmm. but they really became uh, a whole different level of excitement for customers as an access point, knowing they wanted to have that, that limited interaction as much as possible and didn't even have to get out of their car to enjoy Chipotle. Oh, yeah. Now, the deliveries through partners, is that something that is brand new with COVID or did you have that already beforehand? We had started down our partnership prior to that, but we went further uh, yeah. to make sure that the customers had you know, the majority of their marketplace partners that they've always enjoyed available with Chipotle. Yeah. You know, one other piece that we recently uh, announced was our investment in Neuro. It's a service that operates a fleet of these self-driving robotic vehicles for food delivery. And for us, you know, we're always looking for different opportunities that provide innovative solutions to get a better access and convenience for folks. And I think Neuro definitely could be one of those. Any thoughts of delivering tacos with drones? <laughs> Nothing right now, but, you know, we'll see where it comes in the future. Yeah, I think that would be a real possibility. I mean, they're relatively light, you know, and if they fell on somebody's head, you know, they wouldn't really be injured or anything. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, I will say like the one thing that, that really has worked out great for us is our food travels real nice with yeah. delivery. That's great. Hey, let's get into your role with Chipotle. What's the most important strategy or product that you're working on right now? So I'm the head of data and business intelligence at Chipotle. And the big thing we work on, and we're working on specifically right now, is really more data, more accessibility, more timely access for folks across the company. And, and that means a couple of things. We need more data for understanding what's going on out there. And that includes a recent implementation of a customer data platform to give us a real full 360 view of our customer and all ways they interact with our brand using both first party as well as third party data huge unlock for us, as well as investing in more accessible ways to get at the data, which includes better analytics, self-service capabilities. So sure all folks across the company can get access uh, to the data they need. And, and another part is the, the timely and reliable data across the company. And that's us moving into more modern architecture, getting into more near real-time data capabilities, all really exciting stuff for us. Now, you've worked for a variety of companies in your career. I've seen um, on your LinkedIn profile, retailing, financial services, IT consulting, and now the restaurant industry. What are the most important management and leadership lessons that you've learned along the way that you're applying now at Chipotle? Definitely have learned a few things over the years. A couple of the big ones that come to mind, I think the first one is embracing change. A lot of changes happened over the years, especially recently. As a leader, it's really not about avoiding change. It's about driving it. It's about embracing it, especially in the data analytics space. When change happens, you have to think about what does this mean for our processes? What does this mean for our KPIs and how we should be measuring uh, our success? How do we think about our models and ensuring that we know what's going to happen in the future with the right predictive capabilities? You got to stay on your toes with these things as change happens. Mm -hmm. Another thing is just around being uh, authentic. Over time, as I was growing in different leadership roles, I tried to think about what my persona should be. And what I learned through that experience is it's not about creating a leadership persona. It's just being who you are and what persona you really are and not trying to be something or someone you're not. And leaders can be introverts, extroverts. They can be funny. Maybe they're not funny, Steve, but you just be who you are. And that's how you win the respect of, of people out there. Be authentic and be the best person you can be. And I don't think you'll you regret it. And I think the, the last thing I say is just seeking out advice. You're never going to know everything and, and that's okay. And just knowing what you do know, knowing what you don't know and finding good advice out there. And, and you find those folks that are really going to tell you the way it is and give you the advice you need to hear. And those people can give you insightful points about those blind spots that you're not seeing and that aren't going to be a part of your everyday decision-making uh, processes. Find those folks, find the people that are going to tell you how it really is. Yeah. I think that advice is really good for any leader 
at any level in any industry. Very sound. And you sound comfortable in yourself. So I guess it's working for you. I want to switch gears now. Let's, let's talk about the data cloud. When and why did Chipotle begin to move data to the cloud in a big way? And, and what's the status of that evolution at this point? A few years back, we realized we needed to move off of our on-prem world and, and really get to the cloud. And that was for a couple of reasons. The data hunger was becoming real. People were looking for more and more insights to make the right decisions across the company. And we were evolving a lot. And we had to ensure the right performance was there for the data they needed. Ensuring stability was there. We had more customers, more transactions we'd ever had. And that means more data. And the scalability, we were getting hit with infrastructure challenges all the time. And when we moved to the cloud, we could really, at a click of a button, get to a much better spot quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was a big reason why we started and we've evolved a lot even since that starting point 2019 we started moving to more modern architecture we knew that our rewards program was thriving we had to get the right customer data behind it and we want to go further with near real-time capabilities and part of that is getting to a modern architecture so we've been driving towards that and making sure right now like our most important data is on modern architecture data analytics with our data scientists, always using our modern architecture with, with the, the right cloud components, customer platforms there, near real-time capabilities are starting to happen, all really good stuff. Yeah, it's amazing to think, I mean, this is just a couple of years with all this progress. You know, when we were talking to a, a guy from another company today on the podcast who talked about the COVID crisis and how it stressed the company in so many ways, but it accelerated a lot of the changes that people already had in their minds. It was just like, oh, we don't have to wait two years for this. Let's do it now. Have you seen that kind of thing in Chipotle? No doubt. We could have never imagined we'd be at half of our digital transactions right now, or half our transactions are digital. That came extremely quickly. And we're seeing people stick with the digital space too, which, which shows their excitement for the additional access points. We're seeing that in a lot of different ways and how we collaborate as a company and how we just uh, think differently about our collaboration tools uh, across the boards and, and how we use data because we have to use it differently and we have to engage differently across our different groups and all areas of the company. Yeah. Now, this transition, I'm sure it, it's not without its challenges. If you could talk about some of the challenges you faced as Chipotle you know, moved data to the cloud in a big way and, and, and how you overcame them, I think that'd be really helpful for people. A couple of the big things that we had to stay focused on when moving to the cloud, the, the first one is around security and compliance. When you're moving to new architecture, you have to take it seriously and you have to have a focus on it. It's definitely not going to be the most you know, sexy of things, but it's about as important as it gets, especially when you're in a retail or restaurant space with a lot of data that you have to be um, very you know, cautious with. So keeping close collaboration with your partners, as well as your internal security uh, folks is extremely key. The other piece for us is around technical debt and legacy systems and solutions. Everybody gets excited when we talk about modern architecture and moving on to the shiny new things. No one wants to talk about the old stuff and, and what to do with it and the time it takes to retire it or migrate it. But that's just as important in my mind to make sure when you get done and you have this amazing new platform, amazing new modern architecture, that you don't have duplicative platform support. You don't have multiple sources of truth and you don't go backwards rather than forwards. So ensuring people are understanding and you get the support and you make it part of your initiatives, part of your strategy so it's not forgotten and, and you end up in the, the right spot so if the migration to the cloud is kind of like a journey where are you in the journey i mean is it still the beginning in the middle or have you done a massive shift data analytics i think one of the more exciting things is you'll probably never think you're done because yeah. things move so fast and, and your business changes so fast but we definitely have taken a, some good steps as we've we've gone forward, especially with Snowflake as well. Yeah, I wanted to get into that next. When and why did Chipotle begin using uh, Snowflake's technology? We, we started in the uh, beginning of 2020 after a very thorough evaluation, a lot of different data platforms. 
ended up you know, thinking Snowflake's the right one for us. And the main use case we started with was having the, the data behind our, our customer data platform that we implemented. That was really the backbone for our, our rewards program and the customer data associated with it. And we did this for a couple of reasons. One, administrative ease. I mean, it is a fraction of an effort to, re, to manage and administer Snowflake compared to some of our prior platforms, which is so great for our teams. And the scalability, the elastic nature of the cloud world with Snowflake really allows you to, if you want to load data faster, you want to run higher volumes of queries, you want to scale up your warehouses, you can take advantage of that. And then when you're done, you can scale down and you only pay for what, what you need when you need it. So that scalability at a click of a button at your fingertip is awesome. And, you know, aligned to that is the performance and speed. We have a million different use cases for how we need data across the company. And we have to be able to customize what we need for those experiences. So whether it's an operational reporting need or it's our data scientists going extremely deep with the data, we have to be able to have the right way to solve uh, for those things so that we get the right experience uh, for every single case. And Snowflakes really allows us to address all those different situations with this unique architecture. You, you talked about having a lot of different uh, use cases. Let's drill down a bit here. If you could, please walk us through a couple of the most important uses you're making of Snowflake's data cloud and the benefits you're getting from them. The one that you probably expect, our biggest use of Snowflake is just as a data warehouse solution. And we always use it for the most important data and the largest sets of data we have, such as customer data, sales data, those kind of things. The other piece is, is around analytics. It's our go-to platform for all of our data science community across the company. Really helps on the speed to market for insights with the scalable warehouse model. And it answers the high horsepower data needs of these data scientists. And it takes a very little effort to make sure that's available. And we also put a, a big shoulder into the data sharing capabilities mm. because we have yeah. a lot of partners internally and externally that we need data from and they need data from us. Now, is that mainly your delivery partners or do you really have kind of the whole network upstream and downstream hooked into your data and sharing data with you? It's a wide variety. It, it could be any types of partners we have for any needs across all of our different business areas. For us, we're not too concerned about who they are, which area of the company. You know, data is data us. And if we have an easy way to share it, we're going to take advantage of that. So is this something that you're just beginning or is there a lot more to be done with data sharing? What's your vision of what the future will look like? There's no doubt we want to go further with data sharing uh, in Snowflake at, at Chipotle. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day for us, it, it's a code-free integration in both directions, how we can get data from people and how they receive data from us it really does reduce the data integration development time from weeks to, to hours for us. And we use it extensively already today for a number of internal and external partners. And I would say between data share and the direct access of third-party data in the Snowflake marketplace, we are saving extensive time mm. and dollars along with adding so much convenience when people don't need to wait for us uh, to create integration and they can really get access to data as soon as they need it, which is so important uh, these days. And the advice I've given to Snowflake, uh, a couple different things, and really it comes down to how we get to one beautiful, fully together data world. And right. one is building out this marketplace, continue to build it out with the most relevant data. I think of it like, you know, the DoorDash, the Uber Eats for data. If you get to that one-stop shop for all your data needs, man, that's where we go. And the ease to get to it is awesome. So the more relevant data, the more we're going to use it. And the other thing I've, I've given advice on is just the data share perspective. It, it's a two-way street between you and your partners, whether that's people internally or externally. And building the excitement about data share and allows us, allows Chipotle to take advantage of with more and more partners. Like we need to get everybody you know, on, on that page so data share becomes real everywhere we go. Let's look into the future a little bit now. What are the major trends in data technology you expect to see emerging over the next year or so? You know, I, I really think about it in, in a lot of how people are organizing themselves and how they're thinking of data. I talk about it as a one team, one dream analytics. 
Mm. And if you think of what's happened in COVID is organizations, they had to pivot. They had to get insights quickly. Like what is going on in this world? What are we going to do in our organization based on what's happening? And you can't do that in silos. You, you have to really be able to work as an entire company to figure this stuff out. And that's why I think what you're going to see, especially in this next year, is anywhere you had centrally organized analytic groups in a company, anywhere you had fully decentralized, you're going to see more of a hybrid model continue to form. And that means you have local domain you know, experts and leaders, but you also have this centralized expertise on the analytics and the governance. So these new modern analytics self-service tools and the citizen developer data science platforms allowing more hybrid models to be possible and to be really successful. So I think you're going to see these models allow the data insights become really a shared asset aligning and focused on business results and breaking down these silos that happen at companies. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. How do you expect the data cloud, data management, data analytics, the coming technologies to impact business and even society? Man, things change so fast these days. It's hard to know. But uh, what I will tell you is I think it's going to be just everything connected, fully connected data, everything, all silos removed, all data together, you know, people data, customer data, sales data, you name it, all fully connected and, and bring it all together to create super smart relationships on what it all means across it all and allowing business folks who aren't going to be crazy deep in the code to be able to really explore it. So you've probably heard of the concept of a data fabric and, and that's just the idea of a data management architecture that brings all of these disparate data sources together in one beautiful place. It's a fairly simple concept when you think about it, but it's how you take that and you connect it and you connect it using what's called these days, it's like a knowledge graph and it connects all these siloed data and it uses different things like machine learning and things and creates the right relationships and, and really simplifies what's going on. And so that knowledge graph sits on top of these data solutions and allows you to look at all the data together at scale, any kind of data. And it connects it all with the right flexibility, linking you know, millions and billions and billions of data points across the business. And, and the key to all of that is not just about, okay, cool, it's connected, but you have to take that complicated data and make it easy to understand. Establishing that semantic businessy type layer of business definitions and, and things right on top of it that usually can be cryptic and highly technical. And now all of a sudden you have all the data connected in a super smart way that people can really use. And, and it's, it's endless what you can do when you understand how the world's connected that way. So I, I think that's where we're gonna go. Just like uh, how I talked about earlier with organizationally, we're all gonna be connected and the data is all gonna be connected. Just one beautiful data dream. You use the term data fabric, and I've heard other people talk about data mesh these days. Are those the same thing, or is there a difference? I, I think of them as the same thing. Things are changing a lot these days, Steve, but yeah, I think of them as the same thing. It sounds like a high concept. They, they've got to be the same thing. And uh, I hear that you eat a lot of chipotle, that you're a customer as well. So what's your go-to order? Yeah, I am. I was a super fan. Before I did Chipotle, I am still a super fan. And I eat Chipotle about five times a week. I absolutely love it. And my go-to right now, it's our Whole30 lifestyle bowl, which I usually would get it with chicken. I get cauliflower rice. And then, I don't know, maybe once a week, I throw in a barbacoa quesadilla into the mix as well. The quesadillas and the cauliflower rice we just uh, brought out this year. So they're my current favorites that we launched. And they are super great. I'm loving them. You're making me hungry, man. No, that sounds good. Hey, this has been a wonderful conversation. Really enjoyed talking to you. And I love your vision of one team and one dream. This whole idea of all that data being available, no silos, democratization of data within the organization so that it's not just data scientists getting their hands on it. It's everybody on the business side too. And I I think that's a, a great promise that a lot of companies in Chipotle are really starting to deliver on. It'll be very interesting to watch where you guys go next. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you having me. This episode is brought to you by Snowflake, the data cloud company. Inside the data cloud, organizations unite their siloed data, discover and securely share data, 
and execute diverse analytic workloads across multiple clouds. Learn more at snowflake.com slash podcast.